Yo, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? It is Sunday in April, not the last Sunday of the month, but a Sunday. And all, the whole month of April, we are doing live streams. And my name, let's see here, where's my name? My name's Brad. You're watching Epic Quest Random Adventures here on Twitch. And this is a channel that is about the game Morton's List. And in particular, this little bit of Twitch streaming that we're doing today is talking about... Turn this up a little bit. I think I had my mic too low. Uh, we are talking about the Grand 13 Theory. So, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper uh, into that subject. Uh, last week, we talked a little bit about it and, you know, uh, talked about the table it came from, which is the Twilight Scroll, which is one of the 13 tables in Morton's List and the most epic of all tables. And, um, yeah. So, let's turn all this off because I left it on for a very long time, a last stream, and it was kind of annoying for some people so my bad I'm trying to be more professional this time so what's up if you're out there watching say what's up if not tell a friend or well you'll see this later we're gonna post this on YouTube along with the other video I haven't posted it yet because I'm gonna go clean it up and make it look a little bit prettier so um, yeah I've got I've got a couple of props here kind of cool stuff little crystal skull that you always see and this nice big shiny bucket helmet which is a little prop that I'm going to have for the um, return to reality event which is coming up May 13th here in Knoxville Tennessee we'll talk about it a little for a second let people kind of filter in uh, if you haven't heard I'm surprised you haven't uh, because we have been promoting the poop out of it for the last month or so so of it's on Kickstarter you can help back it there we have a Kickstarter campaign and we highly encourage you to do that we only have two days left in the Kickstarter only two days left and you can get one of these of dope stickers right here what one of those bad boys and we'll show you what it looks live here so Got one right here, up close and personal. Let's see here. Shh, it helps if I have my hand like this. I've learned this. Look at that holographic technology dopeness. So get yours for only thirteen dollars over on our Kickstarter campaign. That's if you can't come to the event itself. But if you can make it and can do the two-day event, we can get you one of these bad boys. Let's see. See if we can do the same with this little bit of awesomeness here. Let's see here. It's hard to get the light to hit it. Damn it. Alright, but yeah, we got one of these. It is a dope little one's list coin. It's kind of hard to see, but hey, it'll be alright. So, there's that. Let's see here. We got a better picture of this. Let's show you it here. Here's your close up. Bam! All the high tech technologies. You know, that bling on there, that's just added in post. So, but, yeah. So, there's all that. And, all right, we'll get back to it. There's enough promotions of that, but, uh, well, not, not necessarily. Let's talk about the thing real quick. We are 80% funded. We need less than $700 to be uh, fully funded. So we do ask for your support. Next two days, let's make it happen. Let's get this thing 100% funded. I have faith it's going to happen. Karma will allow it, but with but we need your help. So, all right. I guess we're going to get into it. So, let me grab my book here. The old trusty Morton's List right here in my hand. And I've got a bunch of pretty little icons that we want to pull up. So last week we read the full details of what 
the Grand 13 Theory is. So as a recap, the Grand 13 Theory defies the inner circle to overcome the destructive power of the number 13 to unlock its limitless benefits. So um, if you're familiar with Morton's List, uh, up until the Twilight Scroll, uh, any time you've rolled a 13 on a D30, it's been it's been a bad thing. You've got kicked off a table. You've lost a benefit like a mutation or deviation. Um, maybe you didn't even get to play Morton's List that day. Maybe you. In the worst case scenario, you've got you got Cropocalypsed, and you are banned from playing Morton's List for life. And the crazy thing is, I've known a few people that this has happened to. Like I've seen it happen once, and. Uh, you can ask Tall Jess himself. He was there to witness this. It's in Nashville, Tennessee. So, crazy circumstance. So, And this is the opposite of all those bad things. This quest is a ton of good things. But, this quest gives you 13 tasks that you must perform to complete the quest. So, so it's not just one task, which uh, in the Twilight Scroll we have quests like the Crystal Skulls, which Crystal Skulls evokes the inner circle's sense of mystery by attempting to find and possess a genuine ancient crystal skull of unexplained origin. Not not this crystal skull. This is this has uh, explained origin. It was purchased from a gift shop in Las Vegas. So and it's not even crystal. It's like resin, but it's an awesome karmic prop. So. Sometimes you just need a proxy, so that's what that is. Uh, another quest in the Twilight Scroll is Big Money Hustler, which uh, Big Money Hustler drives the inner circle to become the richest people on the planet. So that just tells you the overall epic scale of the Twilight Scroll. Everything, anything you roll on that table is to the top. I mean, it is over the top. Holy crap, could take you an entire lifetime to complete. Uh, which this quest that I have part uh, I am partaking in may take me a lifetime to complete. I don't know. I am slowly going at it. I'm kind of explaining to you and I will be filming uh, some of the actual quest and posting videos later and kind of just dropping it in a segment that we that we are calling uh, what is the Grand 13 theory. So so we'll have more videos to put out later. This is, I got, just wanted to introduce you to the topic and subject. It feels like I have a hair on my face. Probably a cat hair. So, all right. So let's drop into the very first quest. Or the very first part of the Grand 13 Theory quest. So we'll bring this up right here. This one's not too complicated. This one's pretty easily done. This is the Challenge of Solar Rise. Uh, the Challenge of Solar Rise says, Stay awake from dawn till dusk for 13 consecutive days, beginning at sunset of the day established as day one and ending at sunrise on day 14. So pretty much... I mean, it's not staying awake for 13 days straight, what some people think, but it's it's not. It's staying awake from sunrise when the sun comes up till it sets. No naps, no no sleeping. Uh, it it's not that difficult. That one, you know. But uh, I will be doing it. I think I'm going to do it around the summer solstice because that's when you have the most daylight. And that's when this quest would technically be the hardest, I guess you would say. So that's that's when I plan on attempting this quest. And I thought about, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to start the quest like midway through. So it'll be the most amount of daylight where the uh, summer uh, solstice will hit right in the middle. Or if that'll be the finale. I, I don't know, because it's really not going to change how much time... Whoa, I'm going out of focus. Alright, let's see if this camera will focus in on me. Come on, camera. Alright, we'll just switch cameras. 
There we go. This one will focus in on me. So, so we'll talk to it. So that's the first quest. Oh, Jerry Terrifying in the house. He's the one up here. What's up, buddy? So thank you for tuning in. So we're just sitting here chatting about the Grand 13 Theory and all the possible quests that go along with it. So um, let's see here. Let's get the switch back up. All right. So the second part, this is where things start to get a little bit more difficult. This is the challenge of cosmic law. The challenge of cosmic law states, bring 13 people to trial who have knowingly committed one or more felonies. So it's pretty much about, you know, uh, it's a lawful challenge. And that is people who have done bad, dirty things need to be brought to justice and I don't know it's like being dog the bounty hunter I guess bringing these people in for uh, or, or a bounty hunter or whatever whatever you want to call it so um, that one I don't know man that one's that one's gonna be tough you know what I mean uh, I gotta think and contemplate a lot on it of uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go through my I live here in Tennessee and you know every state has their most wanted list I don't know if we want to go try to really get some real criminals or if we're going to, you know, I don't know, talk to people. And I really don't know how I'm going to do this one. This one's kind of up in the air for now. Um, this will be like an, uh, some bad daytime TV program <laughs> when this goes down and can be quite dangerous as well. So, you know, here I am talking about it. And if I film it, holy crap, that's going to kind of paint a target on my head but you know i don't know how i'm going to do this one yet so uh any suggestions you know you can drop them in the comments that's cool uh had to look it up but you can make the solar rise quest harder oh god yeah jerry terrifies talking about going to alaska for this uh solar quest one or, or solar rise and doing it there where it's daylight for 22 that is probably as extreme as it goes, but funding may be limited on some of these uh, because other other challenges uh, may be a bit more, um, you, know, you know, may be a bit more um, cash over than what I have. Unless I have a, now if I could start a, of uh, let's see what would be the best maybe a patreon and everybody start dropping some dollars there oh that may be awesome but i don't know i don't want to go there yeah i want to do it all on my own and go from there so we'll keep this uh train moving right along because uh you know i'm starting early because there's something i really need to do this afternoon or not need to do want to do and uh um i'm one I, I just felt chaos all in me i'm like screw sticking to a schedule i'm just going to start this thing whenever and uh that's what i did and that's what i'm doing and we got to roll through this so we're going to roll on through and go to the third challenge which this is the challenge of mortal ties this one is is a little tricky it says make a list of your 13 best friends have each of these people make a list of their 13 best friends Make sure that the people named on these 13 lists do not overlap for a total of 169 different friends of friends. Then visit each one in person, spending no less than 13 minutes of quality getting to know you time. So, and uh, it also states in very small things, is also engaged in sexual intercourse with 13 of these friends of friends, which you know, uh, may go against some uh, moral, uh, you know, some uh, personal morals on that. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. But the hardest part is, first of all, coming up, who are my 13 best friends? Like, I'm going to have to reach back into, uh, you know, childhood friends, too. Because, I mean, honestly, I think I have a small group of five to seven people that I, you know, am 
close friends with in my adult age. I may have to reach back through the through the years and decades to find, you know, uh, other friends, and then try to find people that they that have thirteen best friends. They're going to have to do the same. They may have to reach back into their past to find their thirteen best friends, and then go from there. And what I'd kind of like to do with this one is just get a photograph. I mean, probably not a lot of video and stuff, just a photograph of, man, this camera does not like these lights. Or it's, I don't know if it's lights or my face, it's like, we don't like either one of you. So, uh, let's see, I may have to just use this camera. It's gonna be a little tough, I gotta move my microphone over here so I can kinda talk to you a little bit. But, um, yeah, so, I've, probably sit down and if they'll let me photograph them maybe take a photograph of my 13 best friends and then after they make their list and of their 13 best friends that don't interlap that's the hardest thing is having you know uh just a few of my friends hoy is one of my best friends and my friend grant and my friend strange now when they make their list of their 13 best friends and of course of uh, jeremiah another one of my best friends having them make their list of their friends without things starting to overlap is where things get a little tricky so you know and then go from there so and i need to make these a little smaller there we go all right let's make sure i don't have any craziness up on my on my screen here all right, so let's get into the next one. All right, the next challenge is the challenge of Lore Galore. This is one I'm already deep, deep into. And this challenge states, read every word of the 13 following books. The Communist Manif Manifesto by Karl Marx. The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test by Tom Wolfe. The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. A Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto uh, Musashi. The Mist of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. The Autobiography of Malcolm X by Malcolm X. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert M. Persig, uh, the uh, Quran by Allah, the More Than Complete Hitchhiker's Guide by Douglas Adams, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee by D. Brown, Peace is Every Step, the Path of Mindfulness in Everyday Life by, uh, oh man, I always have trouble with his name, Thick, Hot, Han, I can't. Sorry if I butchered it. I apologize. Uh, Infinity in the Mind by Rudy Rucker. And A Brief History of Everything by Ken Wilber. Alright. I'm trying to go back to this camera. Oh man, this camera is pissing me off. So I think it's the lights behind me. That's, let's see if I can fix these lights behind me. I may have to make them static. Bear with me. Sorry, this is the, the hard part of doing this live. All right, bear with me. Just a second here. All right, let's turn this stuff off here and just go to a static light here and let's pull this up. Let's pick a light color here. Blue. There we are. Let's go to this other light. Sorry, I'm trying. Really trying. I said we'll flip this one to green. Right there we are. Mmm, brighter green. Yeah, right there. There we go. Alright. See if we can get it to look at me. There we go. And we'll see if it will stay in focus now without the crazy lights going in now. So, alright. Back to the challenge of Lore Galore. Of, let's see here. 
the books that I've read, I mean, I've already read the Communist Manifesto, I've read the Kool-Aid, or the Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, uh, I've read the Holographic Universe, uh, I've read the Book of Five Rings, I've read the Autobiography of Malcolm X. I may reread that one, because that is a book that I actually read, oh my god, I'm out of focus again. May have to go lock the auto or turn off the autofocus on that other one, other camera there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, uh, I may reread it though because I read that book probably, I don't know, it's been t probably 20 years ago, I guess. So, uh, the art, let's see here, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I've currently read that one in the last year or so. Of, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. That is my current book that I am reading. Uh, Peace is Every Step, the Path of Mindfulness in Everyday Life. That book is one that I will definitely read more than once. Because it's not a very long book. It's pretty short. But man, you want to talk about something that's packed with with good things for your mind. Especially if, you have, if you're having a rough time with mental health. I want to highly suggest that book. Because man... It, when I was having personal mental health issues, man, you want to talk about some reading that would really get me through the day, you know, a tough day, just sit down and just read like a little passage or two out of that book. It was really cool. So uh, I want to highly suggest you picking up that one, just even if you're not doing this challenge. That is, a lot of the books I've read here is, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, there's, this, this list is no joke of books that you should read. So, but, yeah. So, but that one, that's one I've almost, I mean, that one probably won't have its own video. I have maybe like a really short video where I talk about each book and how each one affected me personally. Uh, now I probably should actually start as I'm reading the books, sit down, and, and with each book just talk about them for like just a few minutes and say, you know, what each book, how it affected me, or, you know, the life lessons I've got from each book, and, um, I may start doing that, well, actually, I probably need to start doing that, so, this, this will be, since I'm putting it out there now, maybe now I'll actually start getting on that, and getting this, this is probably one of the first videos that you see from this challenge, so, or from the, uh, the Grand 13 Theory, so, it's probably one of the first ones, probably kind of boring, but, you know, it would be like a book report that you gave as a kid. But, you know. Alrighty. So, on to the next one. Which is kind of in the same... Uh, it's a little bit on the same tip as that last challenge. This is the challenge of I'm Neutral. This says, watch every second of the following 13 movies on a screen. No less than 13 foot wide. So, you've got... From the Heart of the World, Hot Circuit, The Reflecting Skin, Taxi Driver, The Seven Samurai, Saramoda, I'm sorry if I butchered that, uh, The Gods Must Be Crazy, Le Monde du Silence, The Third Man, If... The Knack and How to Get It, The Conversation, and Wild at Heart. Oh, but what I was saying about the challenge of I'm Neutral is I have a friend that has a small uh, one-screen cinema here in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's called um, Central Cinema. That's actually where I'm going to, going today. I'm going to watch a movie down there today, it's, and it's the last showing of a movie I wanted to see today, so... Um, I want to catch it before it's it's not in theaters. Plus, I love supporting my friends and their local businesses. So, uh, but he has offered to show some of these films, and some of them he said he's already shown. So, if I want to see them at his place, I may have to uh, rent it out. Which you can; he'll rent out the place to you on the. I mean, it's pretty reasonable too. You know. Um, you know, it's not crazy expensive to rent out the whole theater for yourself to do a private screening. Now, certain days it's more expensive than others, but, you know, uh, not too bad. Let's see here. 
Oh yeah, Junkhead, yes, you're a little late, but it is A-OK. -okay. We're only on the, let's see here, one, two, three, four, fifth topic. So, so we're not that deep into it. So, yeah, I'm super early. I posted I was going to be early. I'm living in chaotic times, and the reason I'm really living in chaotic times is because I want to go watch a movie today that starts at 145, so that's why. So... But, like I said, this will be reposted on YouTube later, and the first part will be reposted as soon as I get time to sit down and edit and stuff. Sorry, I've been, this week's been kind of crazy. My wife's little brother got married yesterday, so congratulations to Ronnie and Kaylee, his wife, uh, for getting married, and, you know, uh, I played photographer, and, and my wife was wedding coordinator, and buddy, it was a... It was a busy, busy day. So, all right. Now let's get in some. This is another one that's pretty difficult. This is another one. It's pretty, pretty hard. This, the challenge of mountain. It says on a map, find a location that is exactly 13 decakilometers away, as the crow flies, not ground distance. This is travel there and back on foot. Running, walking, etc., in no more than 13 days, which is a total of 312 hours. Damn, that is a challenge. So, I've been doing a lot of math on this one, trying to figure it out, and that's. I mean, you're going to have to do probably over 15 miles a day if you can do the whole stretch it out for. Because uh, I think. Uh, 13 deca kilometers comes out to be, I think it's 80 miles. So, but you got to go there and back. So you got to double that. So, you know, that's more like, uh, you know, so that's a lot of miles to cover. So, um, wait, is that no 60 miles? Sorry, 60 miles. Golly, now I'm confusing myself. I can't remember. I had all this planned out. Let's see here. Let me bring up my little... I have a thing I've been working on here that's got all my ideas and stuff like that. Let me find it here. Where you at? Where you at? Right there you are. Where is my document at? Let me bring it up so I can read it here. It's a little slow today. I got so many things on this computer open and going. So, all right, here we are. So, 13 deck kilometers is 130 kilometers total. 130 kilometers is 80.7783 miles for a total of 161.5566 miles round trip. So, my idea for this one <laughs> was to find a place that's very... This one, I'm not going to make more difficult. Because this one, this one's a time crunch for me. Because I really don't have... Because my job... Uh, where I can take a full 13 days to complete a quest like this. It makes it kind of difficult. Because I work a Monday through Friday, you know, 8 to 5. 8 to 5 job. You know, that got to be there. You know, if I start missing days like that, I start, you know... Uh, if I'm not there, I don't get paid. Kind of. I have a few vacation days, but you can't take like 13 of them at a row. Plus, if I took 13 days to do a challenge like this, my wife would probably kill me because she wants to go like to the beach and other fun things. Uh, so I really got to plan this out. It's going to be a difficult one. This is one I'm I'm actually preparing for right now. Um, I'm doing a lot of of healthy mountain top stuff, uh, working out at the gym, doing weights. Lots of cardio. Um, currently, uh, the weather's getting good, so I can actually start doing a little, little running and jogging outside. Uh, it's starting to warm up, even though this weekend, I think the high yesterday was like 38. It was kind of chilly. But it's, it's, welcome to Tennessee. Weather here is just makes no sense. So, But uh, I'm going to start doing some outdoor training. But currently, when I go to the gym, in an hour, I can do about four miles. And that's just at a... A light jog. It's not me really dying. I may have to stop and, and walk for about five minutes. And then I kind of pick up the pace again. And it's not just flat out just hauling ass running. But, you know, a slight jog. I'm running probably about 
4.2 to 4.5 miles an hour, you know, of now to turn that into five hours, seven hours, eight hours in a day, you know, because my goal is going to be do to try to average out to doing of let's see here. I was going to do 160. I had it I had it planned out where I wanted to do it in in like eight days. So and I got it down where I think I was going to do about 20 miles a day. So. Yeah, it's, it's exactly 20 miles a day. So, well, I may have to do a little bit more because it's one. It's actually almost 160, 162 miles. So I may have to do a couple of days at a at a mile there. So do 21 days on two of those, which will probably be the first couple of days. Try to get as much in, or I may just try to. I don't know if I can maybe not run, but just keep a steady, very fast walk. <laughs> the biggest fear on this quest is is chafing and weather. So if you have a day of really bad weather and it's just raining, because I'm actually thinking about going someplace out west to do this, like one of those, you know, those lonely desert highways that you see that just go straight for miles. Or maybe like some place like Utah, the Salt Flats, some place, but that actually has a road that's straight. That kind of, I mean, I've been looking up the straightest roads in the United States, <laughs> and you know, now it, the only thing is, at the, I don't, I don't want to have to carry a bunch of gear, so, and also don't want to have to have somebody kind of follow me in a car going a mile, you know, going super slow. So I'm trying to figure this out, how I can do something like this and you know get picked up sleep in a bed because i do have some issues because i don't want to be camping out i mean camping would be epic but man that much camping for that many days carrying equipment you know um is, is just going to wreck your back and now if i can get into that kind of shape i will definitely attempt to but man i just don't know if i can get in that good of a shape you know at my age i mean just because I do have back issues. So, I don't know. I can try it, but, you know, it's probably going to be a thing where i got to have somebody with me and I'm going to try to bang out as many miles in a day and hopefully not, like, have blistered feet and chafed ass legs on the first day and it kind of screws everything up. But uh, I'm going to build my way up to it. I'm going to do a lot of... Uh, try to do some days where I just try to do, like, locally, just try to do, like, 20 miles in a day and just see how spent I am and just try to do it... You know, then maybe try to do like 40 to 60 miles in a weekend and just go from there. And because that way, if I start doing it locally, maybe I can have a friend pick me up, you know, when it's time to sleep and then drop me off in the morning just and just call them and say, hey, I'm here. This is where I'm at. That's how far I made it. Go from there. So uh, just trying to find a nice straight path. Um, I, I definitely don't want to do it on the Appalachian Trail. Holy shit, you would die. You would have to be one tough mountain running son of a bitch to do because the hardest thing about this is as the crow flies that's you're not picking a point that's 80 miles away and you know just following the road you got to pick it as the crow flies so that's why i want to do this in a place that has very straight roads to make it this is one i'm not going to try to make harder because it's already pretty i think hard uh to do um all right, so that that's that one. Let's move on to the next one, which isn't really too terribly crazy. Of let's see here, let's see here. Well, I'm sorry, this one is sorry. I was thinking of the next one, but this one is the challenge of vision quest. It says spend 13 days in the deserts of the South Western United States. On an authentic vision quest and it says this activity is to be sanctioned by 13 members of the Native American nation as officially recognized and must fully conform to traditional practices so this is one I haven't really researched that much I don't really have any ideas yet um, this is also another long one that I don't know when I'm going to have time to do this one currently, just because having a total of 13 days, you know, in a row is a little bit difficult right now because of my current job situation. So, 
you know, this may be one I have to really get ready for and over the years and maybe near the end. I mean, this is something, I mean, I'd love to do, if I could, if I had the money and time to do this in a year, I totally would, but I just don't have those, those conveniences, you know, since a lot of these revolve around things being 13 days long, like Solar Rise, that's a 13 day challenge, uh, the mountain one you only have 13 days to do and it's a 13 day challenge almost um all righty and this one's definitely something that you got to do you got to spend the whole 13 days doing it so but but it's definitely something i will research a little bit more and again if anybody has any suggestions feel free to drop them so um you know it's all good so Alrighty, so we'll just get back into it. Sorry, I gotta keep switching in between these little things. Alright, here's a fun one. This one's kind of hard to read because I just made it a little icon. Just uh, crazy. But I've got the book in front of me, so it's easy to read for me. So, this is the Challenge of Chaos. It says, go to any legitimate casino during business hours and purchase 13 $100 chips. Then go to a regulation standard roulette table and place them one at a time all at once or any other way on 13. Continue until each of these original chips has been gambled once any winnings may be kept or gambled. So that one's really not that hard to do if you had the funds. You know, uh... I mean, a lot of people have access to legitimate of uh, uh, casinos. What I'd like to do with this one, I may make it this one like a weekend trip. And I may invite you all to come with me. Uh, if you'd want to meet me in Las Vegas. I don't know when I would do this officially. But uh, I don't know how easy it is for you. Because the beautiful thing about Knoxville is we have a... Um, uh, we have Allegiant Air here, and we have a direct flight to Las Vegas. So, you know, if you plan it out, you can hop on an airplane at 1 p.m. in the afternoon here in Knoxville, Tennessee. In local time, you can be in Las Vegas at like 2 p.m. because it's a four-hour flight, and you lose three hours going out west. So it's only feels like an you know it's it's one of those. Where it's like, oh, you know, I left at 1 and it's 2 o'clock when I got there. We're ready to party, have a good time. Now, coming back, it's the opposite. Because if you're leaving at, like, 1 p.m. Vegas time, it's already, you know, what, 3 p.m., 4 p.m.? Or, yeah, 3 p.m. here in Knoxville. So, you got a four-hour flight. So, it feels like seven hours coming back. So, a little bit of the jet lag's kicking, you, kicking in. But, you know... But that one should be, that'd be a fun weekend trip. That'd be something I could probably fly out on a Thursday or Friday and fly back in on a Sunday or Monday or Tuesday where I don't have to take a lot of time off from work. Uh, probably with all the things that are coming up this year, I got a lot going on. I don't have time to do it this year, but I would like to do it, you know, early part of next year. So it'd be something I'll be saving up for and working working on and i'll i may make it an event and you know if people want to meet me out there we can coordinate what hotels stay at we'll just have us a, a weekend in vegas throw down you know you can take part in this challenge as well if you like or just come out and watch me lose a bunch of money or win a bunch of money because when you play roulette uh let's see last time let's see where did i go i went to Where was it? Stay at the Fitzgerald. Where was that hotel at? It's, uh, I think it was in Mississippi or something like that. Uh, Tunica. That's where I was at. Tunica, Mississippi. And went down and, uh, you know, played some roulette there. Had a good time. Um, and I was, I was kind of betting on 13, 17, 30, and 31. Those are the numbers I was playing. And, man, I was hitting like crazy because if you play, it's like five bucks on say the number 13 and it hits then you win a, a standard roulette table it's like 30 odds are 35 to 1 so you win and you know i won like 80 bucks on five bucks so you can see how that can be exp uh, exponentially 
you know, make some money really fast if you're putting a hundred dollars on it. So you win thirty five hundred. So you know, so you could you could win some money really quick if you've got the balls to bet like that. And this challenge just gives you the excuse to to do that. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it all at one table. Or if I want to break it up and go 13 different casinos and just do 100 each and, you know, just sit there and maybe bring 100 to do some small betting, you know, uh, also, because that, that's kind of the way I envision doing this one. Going to Vegas, inviting some people out. It'd be cool if I can get like thir- no, 12 more people to go with me. So we've got a crew of about 13 and, uh, or hell, whatever, you know, it don't have to be 13 exactly, but, you know. You know, I'm just saying, it's a cool number to throw out there. And we all go have a little fun time in Vegas, you know, do the thing. And, you know, I don't know. The only only thing about actually filming that is a lot of times you can't film when you're at the tables betting and stuff like that. Maybe if you had a little camera, a little hidden something camera and had it on you, maybe you could get away with it. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to go that far. I mean... You're just going to see me losing money. I mean, it's not that exciting. Or you can see me winning money. That would be exciting. But, you know, I don't know. May, I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. I've got plenty of time to think about it and plan this one out. This will be a fun one. So, I think the, the funnest part of this will actually be the trip there and the traveling and meeting up with people and just having a, a fun time in Vegas like some, you know, big money hustle baller style. You know, it would be fun. So, all right. Let's move to the next challenge. We're, we're rolling through. This is the last of the nine prime challenges. So, and this one is the challenge of Nightscape. And it is the direct opposite of the challenge of Solarize. So it says stay awake from dusk until dawn for 13 consecutive days. Beginning at sunrise of the day established as day one and ending at sunset of day 14 so it's pretty much you have to be up when the sun sets and you can't sleep until the sun comes back up and again this is because of my job situation this one's a tough one too even though it's not that hard to do it's really easy to do it's a tough one if you don't have 13 days and I gotta like work in because you know my jobs from usually normally 8 to 5 8 to 6 like that so you know when when the hell would I actually sleep <laughs> you know try to plan this out around take a few vacation days around a holiday or something and then you know try to maximize where you can have the most you know take a week during a holiday maybe one day before I don't know but again I get into using vacation days where my wife will kick my ass for using all my vacation days just to do Morton's List things <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. And rolling on through. All right. This is the challenge of Yang of the Sky. It says, have a certified accountant calculate the group member's net worth, which in this case, the group member is just me, then determine 13% of this figure. If net worth is less than zero, treat it as a positive number. Then donate that amount to a charity that 13 strangers agree is both worthy and good. So, that one's not that hard. I mean, just hire an accountant to kind of figure that out because I have no way how to figure out of net worth. So that's why you get an accountant to do it. And then I would have to have it figured just on me solo and of, I mean, I guess if it includes things like my house and stuff like that, you know, I'd have to, you know, kind of split that, you know, uh, with my wife. Then the fun part of this challenge would be going out and finding people and asking them what charity, you know, and seeing, getting them and asking them, say, hey, can I film you? I just want to see. What is a cha- what is a charity that you consider, um, you know, worthy and good of receiving money? You know, go around and kind of make the video like that. And then, 
you know, um, I probably won't make the video of the accountant doing anything because, I mean, that's getting into, you know, a lot of really personal information and stuff like that. So, I mean, we may have just a number and then take 13% of that number, then figure out how I'm going to liquidate <laughs> cash to have, you know, to be able to donate that amount or how long I'd have to save up to donate that. I mean, I don't know how... <sighs> How you would do this uh, if you didn't have that type of funds just laying around? You know what I mean? If you figured up your net worth and you took stuff into consideration like a house, cars, and whatever junk you got laying, I don't know how you would. You know, would you would you look at this helmet and say, you know, uh, I bought this helmet for forty two dollars. Then, you know, does that get calculated? I don't I don't understand net worth, so you know, I'll have to again ask the accountant and see you know because you know i mean stuff when you buy it's worth a lot but you know and and if i tried to resell this helmet i mean i could probably get i don't know 10 bucks <laughs> i don't know to the right buyer 100 bucks who knows you know it depends on the situation in the moment so but again you know that's one that'll be figured out and i guess that could be part of the fun some of these videos will be super short and won't be very long and detailed. They'll just be really short, you know, just going through the motions. So, <laughs> take some some time for your sickly Uncle Morton. There you go. Uh, yeah, I don't think my company really offers that type of time. I mean, we don't even have sick days. I get I get 15 vacation. I've been at my job almost 13 years this year. Uh, it will be 13 years, and uh, you know, we get. 15 days we're maxed out at 15 vacation days i get no sick days no pto time or i guess my vacation pay would be considered personal time whatever that's all i get it's 15 days total for a whole year and then uh hell my company even if you uh, if a holiday is on a sunday you know like how christmas was let's see here is it gonna be yeah how christmas was well christmas last year was on a saturday this year it's on a sunday um uh, my company doesn't even, we don't close the next day for the observed holiday. And they don't pay you for that holiday either. So it's just like you're asked out. You're done, son. You know, it's like, there you go. So, you know, so some of these may, I don't know, could be better researched and uh, maybe a little later in life. I don't know. I'm, who knows if I'll even be alive. When to be able to retire, but some of these will be fun to do during retirement, you know, and I don't know, the next one's a little scary, let's jump into it, this is, this is another 13 day challenge, oops, shit, smooth Brad, smooth, there we go, alright, this is the challenge of Rainbow Dragon, and it says fast for 13 days, 312 hours, It says, during this time, no foods or drugs may be consumed, nor liquids drink, except for pure water, tap, bottled, etc. So, pretty much, you can drink water, and that's it for 13 days straight. This is one that I, you know, I will definitely consult a doctor before I do. And I will, and it will have to be prepared for, like some fasting, you know, get used to doing a, I don't know, a, a day fast. And once I can do a day fast, get used to doing a two-day fast. Then maybe kind of build up, you know, you don't want to do a lot of that because, I mean, the first thing you start losing is your body starts to, when you starve yourself, essentially, it starts, you know, first thing you lose is, is muscle. So your body just devours that muscle. So right now I've been working out and uh, you know working really hard to to develop muscle so you know this is going to be one that that when when is done will have to be man 13 days without food it is tough for me to go 13 hours without food i mean uh, i start to you know like in the mornings i've been trying to have like one little packet of oatmeal and maybe a banana for breakfast and by like noon I started getting a headache, and I'm like, man, I need to eat something. You know, it's just a thing, I guess, that comes with being old. And uh, 
you know, I don't know. I just, I got to start preparing for that. Maybe do some small, you know, fastings and stuff like that. I don't know. It's one that's going to be difficult to do. And, you know, we will, we will cross that bridge when we get there, I guess. Um, let's see. There's some comments popping up here. Let's see here. Oh, Junkhead says he would gladly do that one. Man, you, you're tougher than I am, my friend. Two-day fasting's easy. Okay. Let's see here. It says start at 8, 16, then work down. Let's see here. Jerry Terrifying saying actually conserve muscle on a fast. Okay, I'll send you some links. Okay, he's going to... Oh, we got some... Some fasting experts in the in the chat today. So yes, Junkhead and Jerry Terrifying. If you have, um, you know, some info on that, then of. Uh, dang, Jerry Terrifying said he did uh, four days one time. Damn. Okay. Well, cool. Well, I was misinformed on the, you know, eating the the lean muscle and stuff like that, but. You know, I don't know. It's a you know the the urban, the myths that you hear people you know say you starve just have to lose muscle whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just going on what. Oh, okay, it's just older info. Okay, so yeah, so it's just what I've heard all my life and just spouting off no no scientific uh, explanation on my part. So, but yeah, but I mean now that there's more science out and people that kind of know what they're doing, it's cool, cool. All right, now here's a here's another tough one. I mean, I'm I can be a mean asshole sometimes, but this one, holy moly! All right, this is the challenge of in the earth, and it says for 13 days, don't do any of the following: smile, give or lend anything, assist those who need it, compliment anyone, do anyone a favor. Acknowledge or show appreciation for something a person did, or help anyone in any way. So for 13 days, it's like be a super asshole and don't be appreciative. And you know, me personally, for this one, <laughs> a good time to do this challenge would be when I am completely alone because I am. I am try to be super nice. I mean, I can be kind of an asshole sometimes. I think we all can. But, you know, for the most part, I'm a nice guy. You know, maybe not so much while I'm at work, but definitely when just out in public, like, you know, if I go into a gas station, I'm always super friendly and smiling. I'm super friendly and nice. It's one of my pet peeves that are people that are mean to fast food workers that pisses me off to no extends like man they're just trying to do a job or any worker i mean not just fast food but you go into somebody's job i guess because i encounter it so much at my job is people just they're just assholes you know because my job is selling car parts and the reason they're calling me is their cars broke down or they own a shop and they're trying to fix a car and you know they're maybe already in a bad mood or something like that because and i tell them how long it takes to get a part or how much a part costs that's the two big factors is how long it takes to get sometimes it can be right now too with this post covid craziness going on is stuff can take months to get in so you got a car it's broke down and you can't fix it for months so that shop can't make any money customer can't drive the car so everybody is kind of in a pissy mood or tell them the price of a part and they're like holy shit that's you know way more than i think that part should should be worth and i'm like I mean, i'm just reading the screen what it says so you know so i guess you know that's why i don't like being mean to people when they're working you know uh, retail workers fast food anybody anybody really in general i mean you can i can be at a restaurant and you can totally just mess up my order and most of the time i don't even send it back i just be like well i didn't want it this way but i'll try it this way sure you know uh, you know the only time i really say anything is you know, if I order, like, someplace, all right, example be, like, fast food, and I order a large fry, and they give me a small, I mean, I'll be like, please, may I have a large instead of small? That's about all I'll do, and I'll be super nice about it. You know, because sometimes they'll let you keep the small, and they'll give you a large. So, be nice 
as it's a uh, pace off sometimes. So, uh -huh. it says, dude, I'm working my last day at this head shop. No F's given. Everyone gets deals today. See, man, that's how I'd be. Say, say I worked at a fast food place. Say. Just as an example, like a, a, I don't know, a place that sells tacos and burritos and stuff like that. That's fast food. I ain't going to mention their name, but say I work there. And, you know, sometimes you go in, you go through the drive through and, man, they give you this little burrito, and it's like that big, and it's like everything's went up. It's like double what it used to cost, and they're giving you less than what they used to give you. And it's like, man, if I work there, it's not coming out of my paycheck. Man, I'm hooking that dude up fat. I'm going to hook you up, and I'm like, pfft. Here we go. There we are. Send that bad boy out. A little extra cheese on it. Shoot, yeah, we'll hook it up. I want to barely be able to fold this sucker over. So, you know, you know, it's just when it now if it comes out of somebody's pocket. Say if you have a job kind of like mine that's 100% commission, and by giving a discount on stuff, I mean it physically comes out of my pay when I give a discount. So, I mean, it's a little bit more difficult. That's why I don't really ask for discounts. Especially at a friend, a friend that owns a business like where I'm going to this theater today. I mean, this guy all the time tries to give me freebies and because I've supported him for well over a decade now. He used to show movies at other people's places before he got his own place. And I was always there supporting him, buying, you know, merchandise, t-shirts, stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I, I'm always one of those people I really support, like, especially bands. Through the years, I'm, I'm, I support bands and... I'm the guy that walk up. You got a brand new CD release show. I'll buy a hundred dollars worth of CDs, of, and I will go like give them out to people for free. About like, man, you should listen to this band. You know, you should try them. Especially people that are in that type of music or a traveling uh, performer. Of just, I mean, that's that's how I do. Is I buy merchandise and pass it on, or CDs and pass it on to other people. So. All right, I'm, I'm kind of... All right, all right. <laughs> Let's go back to the uh, challenging in the earth. So this one's going to be difficult for me because usually I'm not an asshole. Usually I'm, I'm a super nice guy. Or I tell myself that. I mean, some people may say I'm an asshole, but who knows? Aren't we all? Aren't we all? All right. Now, the final of these 13 challenges in the Grand 13 Theory. This is one that for some is extremely difficult, but for me... Uh, I've I've got this challenge already beat. And there's one person I need to spend 13 minutes with. So this is the challenge of the Twilight Scroll. It says, spend no less than 13 minutes with each of the three authors of Morton's List. If one or more are dead, spend time at their grave sites. And it says, feel free to leave 13 flowers. So, I mean, that one, I mean, I've already... Uh, you know, through the years of playing Morton's List, as probably some of you all here have already have already done, that it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be hard. It would be uh, spending time with uh, um, Tall Jess, uh, Ninja Nate, and Jump Steady, or Jess, Nathan, and Rob. So, <laughs> however you want to call them, how well you know them, whatever. Um, you know. Uh, I don't think that one's that difficult, you know. Maybe, maybe Rob because he's running, you know, psychopathic and really. But maybe if you could catch him right at the right time, probably not the gathering's the best time to do this. Maybe, maybe some other time, you know, when you could catch him, you know. I don't know. Uh, I've got a lot of friends that that know him really well, you know. But you know, for me, I've already. I think I've already spent. I know with Nathan, I definitely spent well over. 13 minutes. I probably spent closer to 13 hours hanging out with Nathan and and Jess. In person time, we haven't. We spent some. I mean, we've definitely done more than this would uh, this challenge uh, offers. But on the phone time, man, me and me and Jess, we talk all the time. You know, especially pointing out this. Um, ever since COVID kind of hit, and you know, he started doing the Twitch online thing and the YouTube stuff, and I started doing mine. We. We became pretty pretty close, and we've spent a lot of phone time together. So, you know, that'd be some. I could say we've we've definitely spent more than 13 hours talking on the phone. But, you know, uh, 
But yeah, a good way to do this is to come out to major Morton's List events. Like, if you want to get this one done, you can at least knock out those two Twilight Lords at Return to Reality. Another plug, shameless plug, um, there. So, all right. But yeah, that one shouldn't be too difficult. You know, definitely like to sit down one day and, uh, you know, kind of talk with Rob about. I mean, it'd be really cool to be able to sit down and actually have more than 13 minutes and actually talk a little bit more in depth if he wanted to talk about Morton's list and go from there. So, you know, maybe I'll get to do that one day. Who knows? You know, t time and karma will tell. But that, that one's almost. Won't be able to really go back and film that one because I can't really, and I wouldn't really want to, you know, put them on the spot like that and spend, you know, uh, I'll have to film that and put it on camera. So this may be just one that I tell the stories, you know, I've got some fun stories of hanging out with, of uh, with Nathan at different things. Like one of them we made a video about when we brought Nathan to Knoxville and, um, you know, he, he dungeon mastered for me and a group of friends. The video's not that great, but you, you've you seen it. It's it's the first video, the first official video that we dropped for the, the Epic Quest Random Adventures YouTube channel. Um, it was pretty fun. So, all right. So that's that. We're out of, out of topics to talk about. That's the 13 challenges of the Grand 13 Theory of each table represented in Morton's List. Some way more difficult than others. Some's going to require a lot of planning. Uh, other ones are going to be simple and knocked out and are almost already done. So, but hopefully I can sit down and I will edit this up nice and pretty and take out all the the plugging <laughs> of events and the, the minor screw-ups that we hit. Uh, this, this stream went smoothly and I appreciate the homies Jerry Terrifying and Junkhead. I appreciate you guys being here and hanging out with me, you know, and, you know, that's why I like filming this and I'm recording them and eventually they'll get cut and people can watch them on YouTube, but, uh, you know, um, but I do appreciate having a little somebody to chat with whenever I'm doing them. Makes it seem very more intimate and fun, so, and luckily there's only two people so I could sit here and I'm, it's hard to run a one-man show where you're changing cameras and you're changing stuff and reading comments so you know i'd love to have you know 500 viewers but guess what hey i'll, I'll you guys i love two as many as i would love 500 actually i love you two more so all right so uh we will conclude this episode of the grand 13 theory uh my name is brad uh, or mutant 13 or whatever you want to call me um and I appreciate you tuning in and being part of the stream today. And I appreciate you if you're watching this on the rebroadcast on YouTube for clicking the links and um, all that fun stuff. Check out Morton's List if you don't know what it is. If you stumbled on this and you made it through this whole video, props, making it through this without knowing what Morton's List is. Check it out. It's a game of... Uh, random reality. And if you see this before May 13th... Uh, you know, we'll, well, well, never mind. You're not going to see this. You're not going to be able to buy tickets by the time this thing comes out. So, but we'll see you at um, Return to Reality uh, Friday, May 13th and 14th here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and the 12th, Thursday, the 12th, for our uh, uh, Baller Nacho Symposium to the 13 lucky folks that are able to attend that. So, all righty. Gentlemen, thank you all. Ladies, if you're out there, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. See you. Peace.